What's up guys and welcome back to the Salford City Youth Academy career mode episode number 6. So in between episodes I actually completely fixed everything wrong with the save. The game's bugged so Youth Academy players have really low dribbling and heading so I fixed it all to put them about average for these players. And as you can see all their overalls have shot up pretty much. I also finally got the live editor working so every player has a new mini face as well. So instead of being generic they actually have the team jersey on. The only player that didn't get upgraded at all is Antwi and that's because he is a regen. Because for some reason Youth Academy players are bugged but regens aren't. And I'm gonna go over the players we scouted in the Youth Academy last episode. We got Christopher Pasco from Wales. And then we have three players in South Tama and Principal. The first player has the longest name, and it's Gerson de Bardo Semedo. And the next two are Edmil Santati and Francisco Texeira. I actually finally got Football Manager so I can actually get generated names for each country. So what Cutsy does, and it's actually a lot more interesting than finding them on a random website. Let's just get into the first game because I actually have one more thing to show you. So here we are for the match against Doncaster Rovers, and as you can see, we got new scoreboards. It's actually like an EFL League 2 exclusive scoreboard someone made, and I think it looks really cool. It's just another way to differentiate these matches from later on matches in the series. Plus, I feel like it gets you more in the mood for an EFL League 2 match. I also forgot to mention that I changed both goalkeepers' diving stats to around average, just because 19 isn't going to cut it. They covered over, but he is still making good waves. Frost it in, and Twi. Headed right at the goalkeeper, and he really could have made more out of that. If he gets it anywhere but down the middle, it's probably a goal. Plazi. Swing that in, Plazi. Antwi. Doesn't win the header, but he wins the corner. John swings one in. Oh, Plazi. Falls right to his foot, and he smashes it in. In the last two games I've played, we've scored three goals, and they've all been from Plazi off corners. I don't know what it is with Plazi's last two games, but it feels like every corner is just falling right to him. And if he wants to keep doing this, I'm not going to complain. Oh, no, that's a horrible touch, Hutton. And they score. I'm not going to say Hutton gave them that goal, but they wouldn't have scored it without him. He shot the ball right in the Hutton, which all he had to do was not touch backwards. And he, you're not going to believe what he did. I'll play him through. John, in behind. What can he do? And that makes 2-1, to one, and that's about three goals in the past five minutes. For some reason, this is like the most end-to-end -end game we've had in ages, and we are cooking right now. And John finally gets his first goal back from injury. Hopefully, a sign of things to come. That's a good tackle, Palazzi. Uh-oh. They're in again. And Vaughn makes a great save this time. That's a good ball. That's a great save from Vaughn. Kalu. Out to Jacobs. What could Jacobs do? Cuts in. Nowhere really to go. Hits a shot. Makes a keeper make a good save. Yep, that's great. Franklin. Cross it in. Ziwa wins the header. And he makes it 3-1 with 3 minutes to go, and we seal the win here. Over the top from Armstrong was really nice, and the cross from Franklin was just as good. And then we have Zewa win a header from Point Blank and win the game for us. And that's going to do it for the game. We ended up beating Doncaster Rovers 3-1, and it was fully deserved. We kind of just took control from the first minute and never really gave it away. There was one scary moment where Hutton gave him a goal, but we bounced back after that. And we honestly played perfect pretty much this game on offense. We got a match to simulate against Gillingham, and I completely switched around the squad for it. Only two players to stay in are Hutton and Plazi, and that's because it's just really good. The team's overall is actually pretty good at this point, so a 2-1 loss is kind of bad because I expect wins from here on out. So Fowler, who I actually really like, handed in a transfer request. He's been getting like a good amount of game time, and he decides that he's not getting enough, so he wants to leave. And honestly, if a player wants to leave, I don't really care. They can go. So it looks like he is going to be going to Amens. So it looks like I made one big mistake in the middle of the season, and that's that I loaned out way too many players. Because we had one midweek game, look what it did to all my players' energy. Because now I have to start a whole back line with max 85 fitness. And Mulder finally gets his game at center mid. We still got a pretty good team out there, so we might win, but honestly, who knows. Oh, and I forgot to mention that we're playing 20th place Cheltenham, so we realistically should win. And here we are for that match against Cheltenham. There Drew goes. What a ball to Jacobs. Swung in. John with a... Pretty decent attempt, but it's wide. John wants to be Armstrong so bad. Balls played up. John wins that somehow. What could he do? A little wide. No one's running in the middle. And that's a good save from the keeper. Playing Antwi. One touch finish. That's another good save. Played across the face. Antwi. Simple little goal, and then we take that 1-0 lead. And as I look up at the scoreboard, I happen to notice how I cannot see the other team's name. But it doesn't matter because we just scored a simple goal. All the goal was was being in the right place at the right time. And realistically, that's all I need from my striker. Kalu. Good ball, I guess. Oh, even better ball. And Knight drags his shot wide. I have no clue how he got that chance, but Knight needs to be finishing that. Kalu. Oh, he breezes by him. Kalu. Great stuff. And Antwi gets a second tap in this game. Once again, we have one player doing all the work, and then Antwi just feeds off of it. If Antwi can just fall into the Holland roll where he's just big in the middle and gets goals, I would be super happy. Plazi, come on. And they're in, but that's a crazy save from Vaughn. 
Swing that in back post. There he is, John, and he heads it onto the frame of the post. For some reason, every cross is kind of just like magnetized to John's head. He can just not finish one even. That's a great play, and they score. Oh, we give him the angle. And they make it 2-2 two to two in no time. He kind of just backed off because I didn't think he was going to run straight forward, which he just did. And Antwi somehow breaks through right away. And that's a great save from Santander. Shabalala finds himself open, though. A little bit of green spoot. A little bit of space to run into. Shoots it right at the keeper, but Armstrong cleans it up at the second time of asking, and we are up 3-2. to two. All three goals this game have been tap-ins, but it does not matter. I also completely fumbled my words mid-shot, but also doesn't matter because Armstrong with a clever little acrobatic kick scores. Maybe a tad disingenuous calling it acrobatic, but it is what it is. What can Armstrong do here? Oh, he has the man for pace. Cuts in. One-on-one. -on -one. Scores his second of the game in about 10 minutes, and he pretty much just won us his game. Playing Armstrong again. Armstrong. Breaks by the defender. You have to go for your hat trick. And that's a good save. He could have really passed it across, made it 5 on the day for us, but he needed to go for the hat trick. Like, I personally wouldn't have felt right if I didn't give him that chance. And we end up winning the game 4-2. to two. Cheltenham wasn't the best team, but we did make a meal out of it. Most of it was up to the players being really tired, but we can't let this happen. Because with how good we played, we shouldn't be winning the game in the 80th minute. For the next game, we're going to simulate it's against Tranmere Rovers, and the subs I made, it just felt right. I can't explain it, I just feel like these players should be playing. And maybe I was right, because we do end up winning 2-1. to one. And we might actually be flying up the table right now. So this month actually has a lot of games, so we're not going to get a scouting important until before the next game. Let's just go with the team now. We're going to start with the front three of Shabalala, Armstrong, and Franklin. They've all been doing really good recently, so I might as well start them. And then midfield three of De La Fuente, Parsons, and Kalu. It's kind of just a main back line, but instead we have Mulder at right back. And then Novak's going to start in goal, because I feel like I don't give him enough game time. And here we are for that match against Colchester United now. And their main color is actually blue, so the scoreboard looks really nice this game. Ball falls down. De La Fuente smashes it, and that's a good save by Macy. Oh, that's great stuff. That's a good ball. Touch. Hit that. Armstrong. Tight angle. Another good save. That's a good cross. And they end up making it 1-0 in 12 minutes, and we are finally down this episode. We've had more chances from the kickoff, but we haven't had a good one yet. And as I say that, we play an Armstrong behind, but he's offside. Playing Shabalala. He's in behind. Smashes it. And ties it all up at 1, 17 minutes in. Shabalala is low-key a stud of a player. Playing Armstrong. Well, that's a beautiful touch. But the shot is not as good. But, oh, Hutton. You can't just let him run off you like that. And they shoot it early and somehow catch Novak lacking. Hutton just let them go in behind for some reason. And Novak has a mare in goal. Over the top to Armstrong. Who doesn't win the header, but it falls down so favorably. And he scores two minutes out of halftime. I have no idea how it fell this well. But it doesn't matter because he just smashes it in. Shabalala. Back to Armstrong, one touch, smashes it, and the keeper makes another good save. Overlap him. That's not the right player I wanted to play it to, but it doesn't matter because somehow Armstrong gets himself open and finishes from a pretty tight angle. And after I was pretty much dogging on him in the first half, he grabs a brace in the second. Also, Zhu smashes one, and that took a great save out of the keeper to keep it out. Knight, first player of the game, goes to swing it in. Doesn't really fall to nobody. And it falls actually back to Chabalala, who smashes it in. He grabs himself a brace this game, and that was pure luck. Good tackle, Chabalala. Oh, Chabalala wants a hat trick. Oh my god. Oh my god, Chabalala just went through the whole team. And he does grab himself a hat trick. He won the ball back himself, dribbled through their whole defense, and just smashes it in the back of that net. Played in, Armstrong turns his man in for the hat trick. And the keeper makes a good save. That might be two games in a row where Armstrong chokes his hat trick chance. Oh, cross it back post. That's a horrible finish, but slices into his own man who tries a strike. That's a good save from Novak. We have one more chance to score. Armstrong wants himself. He'll be unselfish though. The team doesn't want to be unselfish. They want to give it to Armstrong. He breaks in. Armstrong grabs his hat trick with the last kick of the game. The team was pretty much force feeding him the ball for the last 10 minutes and he finally grabs it. We end up winning the match 6-2 to I think. And Armstrong had 13 attempts. <laughs> that is insane. That's the most I've ever seen in a game. And we just dismantled Colchester. So we have one more match to simulate before we finally get youth monthly scouting reports. And it's against AFC Wimbledon and want to go ahead and throw out a pretty good team still. We end up losing 3-1 to one, though. So here we are for those monthly scouting reports. Let's just go over the nations I scouted. Colin C said to scout Scotland for anything. Brent Hernandez said send a scout to Faroe Island 
for center back and left backs. I already had this one set up, so I might as well just keep right backs in there. And we only got two comments, so I chose to scout Madagascar. If you guys want to see me scout any countries in a future episode, put them in the comments below, because I really don't want to choose them myself. And now we can go over them. In Faroe Islands, we got this one dude who looks really good, but everyone else kind of trash. And we actually might as well sign this left back as well, because he looks pretty decent potential wise. And I completely forgot to go over it, but I completely changed the scouts as well. I use past players from past career modes on this channel, so the one over here on the right that we just went over is Emo's friend Alua from the Borumwood career mode. That career mode only got 10 episodes, but it's still a pretty good one, so I decided to use him. The second one we have is Glenmore Rousseau, who was part of the Newport career mode, who was pretty good. He always had the face mask on, he's pretty iconic for the series. And he ended up scouting nobody good first month. And the last scout we got is probably the best one out of all of them. It's Adrian Ganser, who won the Champions League with Walsall, one of my career modes. And he ended up scouting two good players this time. They both look pretty good, but I think I'm going to sign up the one with more overall. So I just went ahead and changed all three of the players' names. We got two from the Faroe Islands, and the first one is Yogvan Langard, and the second is Ola Jakob Peterson. And the one player we got from Madagascar is Sabalo Ravalasina, and this is the team we're going to run with for the next match. Same offense as last time out. New midfield three of Knight, Kalu, and Ziwa. Chagorda and Zhu as the wingbacks, with Hutton and Palazzi keeping their positions, and Vaughn coming back in. This lineup's pretty much just based off fitness, but it's still really good. And here we are for our match against Walsall United. My bad, Walsall FC, they're not actually Walsall United. I always really like Walsall because they're the first Karimo I did in the channel. And the jerseys are really nice this year. Good tackle, but it falls right back to them and it's another good tackle. Armstrong, tight angle, just smack it. And the goalkeeper parries it. Out, so I think that was Ziwan. He makes another save. Ziwa had a whole half of a goal he could have put it into and he decides to kick it right at the goalkeeper. Uh-oh. Plotsy got cooked. Chigorda. And they're in, and they make it 1-0, 24 minutes into the game. Shigorda played some horrible defense there. He just didn't cover back for literally zero reason. Chalala cuts in. That's great stuff, and it's off the post. What a goal that could have been. And he's found in again. Just played across, Franklin, wide open goal, and we equalize. We are doing great on offense. We just need to finish our chances. And we squared it back up with five minutes to go in the half. Clue. Oh, that's a bad challenge. Oh, when he sent him off. Walsall are down to 10 players in the first half. I mean, it was a bad challenge, but I really don't think it was that bad. I'm not really going to complain, though, because that helps us a lot. Shigorda lines up a long shot, and he slams it in the top corner. That's another goal of the season contender. And I was blaming Shigorda for giving away the first goal, but he more than made up for it with that one. And that's his first goal all season, which means it's his first goal for the club. Is it just all long shots that are great? And it's looking like because De La Fuente almost scored from far out. See that run? Beautiful run from Armstrong, and he just puts it wide of the post. Plays in Armstrong, you see Knight. That's a great ball. Knight in behind. That's too big of a touch, but the keeper doesn't come out. And Knight makes it 3-1. There's a great little bit of play, but Knight took too big of a touch, and for some reason the keeper didn't come out to take it off his foot, and he just slots it in the bottom corner. And it looks like we're starting to pull away from Walsall here. That's a great ball. And with 15 minutes to go, they cut the lead back down to one. That ball was genuinely insane. I don't know how he made it. And after the third goal, I said we're starting to pull away, but Walsall have reeled us back in. That's a great ball. Jacobs swings it in. Oh, it's beautiful. And Armstrong with the diving header in the 89th minute regains our two goal advantage and we're going to win this game pretty comfortably. The build up play on the sideline was nice, the cross was even better and then the diving header is just straight up insane because there's really no need to be doing all that. Armstrong pulled off his best Kevin Gates impersonation with that goal. They swing it in, we need to get the ball out and they missed the shot in the last second and that does mean we do end up winning the game 4-2 to two against Walsall. Pretty deserved win, we made it kind of nervy on ourselves but we ended up getting all three points at the end which is all that matters and Armstrong keeps his form up by scoring in yet another game. I'm pretty sure he's the top goal scorer in the league at this point, he is actually going crazy this season. We have one more game to go over this episode and it's the one against Newport County. It's a couple of days after the last one so I decided to rotate the squad quite a bit and funnily enough this is the second team in a row that we're playing that I actually manage in a former career mode but that shouldn't mean all too much because I really just want to get a win here. Which we don't end up doing, but we do tie 2-2, two two, which is pretty decent. And I think that's going to do it for the episode. A couple big changes to the series that I made that I really like. I had to play on many phases, things pretty cool. It looks pretty nice. And the scoreboards in the games also look really cool. Plus, ever since I updated the dribbling and heading accuracy, the players' overalls have skyrocketed and we've been a really good team. And you see one though, EA can't just fix their game themselves. But I don't want to go on a huge rant like this, so I digress. I think currently we're in 10th place right now, and we have 7 more games in the season. So if we just come out blazing the next episode, we might make the playoffs. So yeah, as I was saying, thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.